around about 50 miles an hour. The wind is against your body so much that you, you can lean into it like that. You start to get lines on your face. Getting up to 70 miles an hour, you're almost going to have to get onto your knees. You're in like this, holding your anemometer up, actually recording the wind. Once it starts getting up to 100 miles an hour, you'll just be knocked over. We would roll you down the street like that, literally. You're building it, you're in, start shaking and trembling, and, and the wind's going like this, and the various things, it's very, very active, and all of a sudden it will just... just almost like stop. Stuart Robinson is an IT consultant based in Leicestershire. He's also a fanatical storm chaser. <laughs> in 2008, his goal was to reach the eye of a monster hurricane. Watch for debris, Stuart! Watch for debris, man! To do this, he'd need to defeat the odds, defy the authorities, and run the risk of a cold front at home. I'm just starting to wonder now. Are you married to me or the bloody hurricane? Oh my God, what am I doing? What am I doing? Just how far would Stuart Robinson go in his quest to make it into the eye of a hurricane? This is the storm of the century. You need to be scared. Oh my God. I want to show you my office at the moment, which uh, which looks like a bomb's hit it. I realised I'm not very organised and it's making me feel uncomfortable. Plus, when Alison gets home and she sees the mess in here, she won't be very happy. Stuart Robinson lives with his longtime partner and fiance, Alison Baker. Right, it's five o'clock. Latest models have come out. From the DIY Met office in his spare room, Stuart is constantly on the lookout for storms. He's located a potential typhoon heading towards Taiwan. That's great. That is absolutely great. And let's just see when it was taken. OK, that was taken at quarter past five, so that is only 25 minutes old. A view from space looking down at our storm. I think we've got a storm. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, you know that one uh, I was looking at this morning? Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, gone from being a, uh, a mass of clouds into a big blob with... Uh... <laughs> She's very shy, really. Yeah. I think sometimes he forgets that I'm still left behind, cos he obviously gets very excited about going away and get very up-to-date reports about what's going on. If it goes dead straight, I'd need to be there for Tuesday, certainly there for Monday, I'd have thought. Oh, right. No, it needs to be there for Monday. If it if it looks like it's... I know. <laughs> I have to still I'll remain at home and carry on going to work and et cetera and... All right, mate. It can be uh, a bit lonely, I suppose. Are you like a storm wag? <laughs> <laughs> a storm wag? Oh, mm. that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't quite live their lifestyle, no. Oh, I don't think you do too badly, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Storm wag, jeez. I suppose I've always had an interest in weather, even as a young lad. You know, we used to love seeing snow fall, fall and, uh, uh, you know, if ever there was a thunderstorm, I always used to press my nose against the window trying to see a bolt of lightning. It's always been there, but it was really many years ago when Alison took me to the cinema to see that film, uh, The Twister. I suddenly had one of these ideas in the back of my mind that I'd actually quite like to see one of these tornadoes. Oh, my God! In 1998, Stuart witnessed his first tornado, and over the following decade, storm chasing has become a full-blown obsession. To date, he has chased over 30 tornadoes and six hurricanes. I've filmed giant hail. I've filmed lightning. I've filmed blizzards. The one thing I haven't seen is the true, clear stadium effect of the eye of a hurricane. The holy grail for any storm chaser is to witness the calm centre of a ferocious hurricane. But to get there, they must first withstand wind speeds of up to 130 miles an hour. 
Though we've done it before, we do it every time, we're going to go into the middle of a landfalling hurricane. Not the outer periphery where it's going to be a little bit windy and rainy, we're going right for the very eye. These are glow sticks, you open them up and they're like a, a tube that long and you, you snap them in half, you bend them, and they actually glow for eight hours. These actually provide really, really good eye protection, really good. I mean, you shouldn't get too hot under there and they shouldn't, shouldn't steam up, so uh, they work. Look at that, there's a spider. Probably going to have a guest coming with us on the storm chase. The food. It was Alison that came up with the best suggestion. Just get yourself a tin of beans <laughs> and uh, uh, it's got a pull top on it and I know I can eat them cold. So a little bit of food, a few basic gadgets and we're starting now to amass, uh, amass a storm chasing equipment together. The typhoon that Stuart is currently tracking is rapidly increasing in strength. It's heading for the island of Taiwan. If he's going to make it, he needs to move quickly. Now, you defy any storm chaser in the world to see that and not want to do whatever they can to get there. What an absolute beast. Absolutely perfect. Currently, sustained winds at 140 miles an hour with gusts to 170. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. We're not going to survive that, Ollie. I'm not just saying that. There is nothing on that island that will survive that. Yes, flight support. Standard meal, flight... That's it, to be honest, with electronic ticketing. Just with that. <laughs> now is not a time to think about bottle. Now is, is time to be sharp and, we, you know, we're going after this and stuff. We're going to put ourselves in the path of a super typhoon. Uh, if those wind radii verify, then we're going to be getting into gusts of sustained 165 miles an hour, which is enough to level a lot of man-made buildings. <laughs> Morning, dear. Yourself, dear. We'll be careful, don't worry. Yeah, so I'll see you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever. See you later, dear. It was the usual carry on as if nothing's happening type departure. She said to me this morning, she said, You don't have to go, Stu. Oh, this is all the flights are booked and everything like that. I don't know, we're off now, that's it. How do you feel if we don't get the eye? I'll be gutted. Absolutely gutted. We won't miss the eye. Well, I'm going to do everything possible to get that eye. If, if we're not going to go for the eye, this is not worth leaving, leaving England. OK, where's Rog? Stuart Robertson has arrived in Taiwan to chase Typhoon Crosa. Hey! Ah, oh, Mr Hill! <laughs> hey, my man. Sorry, He's arranged to meet his old storm-chasing buddy, Roger Hill, who's flown over from Denver. Oh, yes. <laughs> what a flight coming in. We flew through the northern side of the hurricane. The really? Typhoon. It's going to hit probably about 100, 150 miles south of here. Central still, Taiwan. Still, still showing... Perfect. Still showing max sustained winds, 145 mile an hour. Yeah, really? Gusting 170. Oh, Sunday, Monday. Uh, tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon? Two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Well, we may need to uh, we may need to get the car and just get down there. Could you just check the insurance on the car? Okay, is it um, what we call it's, it's bumper to bumper? It's full insurance, isn't it? Oh, yeah. um, you, uh, um, how can I explain? Uh, the, the highest level of insurance to cover everything. There's a there's a typhoon coming. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. And we'd hate to say, if, if a tree fell on it. Yeah. We want the insurance to cover it. Can't explain. Look, if a tree yeah. falls on the car and yeah. the car's squashed flat, yes. Oh no, I come back to you and wait. Sorry, but here's your cars. I want it. I want it to be covered. Do you, do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a good map of Taiwan? Ah, this will work. Oh, excellent. There. We go. There will work. Somewhere, down Somewhere down here. This is the highway. Highway one. Yeah. This planning is all important. We've got to be on this highway eleven. You do. You are going to East Coast only. Uh -huh. But uh, after the typhoon... That, that's what we're here for. We're here for the typhoon. We're here for the typhoon. Oh, really? Yeah. We're trying to get in the eye of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> With Typhoon Croser due to arrive in the morning, it's a chance for the two old chums to get reacquainted. What's it like for you, for you guys both to be back together again now? Oh. Oh, <laughs> Roger and I are. <laughs> We're great buddies. We go back many years and we've, we've had the pleasure of uh, experiencing some pretty wild weather together. Oh, that's for sure. I, I always say that it's, it's really, really interesting to see this sort of weather, but it's not quite the same unless you can share it with someone who's like-minded. and got to <laughs> have the same passion. As you <laughs> Roger's and certainly got the passion. Yeah. If you've never experienced it before, the sounds in the eye wall are just un unimaginable. It just... just to hear the wind and all of what the wind and the storm is doing to the terrain, uh, it's, it's just actually scary. It's frightening. Mm. Typhoon Croser is just hours away. The island of Taiwan prepares itself for the worst. With the typhoon fast approaching, Stu and Rog quickly customise their car in readiness for a storm chase. And we are off! A lovely adventure. Oh, I just cannot believe the lack of preparation. This would just be shrapnel hell, I won't say. Oh my god. See, some of these really. These... Those are good airborne. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. Oh, that was a disaster waiting to happen. Oh, you yeah. don't want to be around that when those go flying. Ah, oh, yes, now yeah, we get out of town. In the oh, my God, Rog, look at this lot. Oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> wow, let's do it. Oh, look. Oh, you oh know, my God. God. That ocean's building. Yeah, oh. really building. Wow, look at the wave action. What a storm. What a storm. Winds are only gusting to 75 miles an hour right now. It's going to double that before this thing's done. With the sea surging and the winds building, Stu spots a local man oblivious to the oncoming storm. Hello, you're not going to stop here, are you? Typhoon. By typhoon, by winds, you'll be. I oh, know, uh, Lang. Uh, yeah, a very high wind at about 5 o'clock. Five o'clock there, yeah. right here, very, very strong. Yeah, you want to, yeah. I hope he goes. I don't think he understood a word I'm saying, and uh, I really don't believe. I mean, this thing will be, give it another four hours, the waves will be breaking here, and this thing will just float away. That is a great spot for yeah. wave action. It really is. Oh, look at those clouds. Having had a quick fix of stormy wind and wave action, the boys head inland in preparation for the main event. Yeah. My God, Stu, this whole town is going to be gone. Yeah, this thing really started to crank up now. Yeah. You can just tell by the amount of vegetation. Look at the trees going to the side of the road. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Expecting Typhoon Croser to be over 200 miles wide and with winds of up to 170 miles an hour, Rog and Stu decide to take shelter at a petrol station. Oh, yeah. Definitely 110, 120 mile an hour wind. It's one south of us. What we just found out is that the... Uh, the eye of the typhoon, instead of moving to the northwest, was actually taking a little bit of a jog to the west, which puts the eye actually coming on shore just south of us, within 10 or 15 miles south of us. This toy, whether or not we need to, we can get south. We only need to get south by about eight miles to get into the eye, but it's whether or not we've got time to do it. We've got nothing to lose. You're Come right. on, let's just the do it. Is, With the, the typhoon changing south. direction, the boys decide to make a dash south in a last ditch attempt to try and catch the eye of the storm. Oh, shit. 
we cross the eye wall, we'll know it, right, tonight. No, this is this has to be the eye wall. I mean, it has to. No place else it could be, really. The wind drops nothing here, Roger. They have. No, please don't let that be the worst of that typhoon. It can't be, Roger. No, no, see no, how no, no, it's even possible that it could be the worst. I can't believe it, Roger. I, I can't accept that. Maybe a radar shot would be worthwhile. Yeah. With the winds now dropping to 50 miles an hour, the boys stop to try and figure out where the storm has gone. You won't believe the level of disappointment I'm emanating right now. Incredibly, the storm has done a U-turn and bounced back off Taiwan into the Philippine Sea. The eye has eluded them. The chase is over. That would be goddamn Stu. I would not have come all this way for that. Oh, heck no, no, I agree. Oh, dejected. <laughs> Tired. I'll tell you what, Taiwan dodged a bullet. They really dodged a bullet. They really yeah. dodged a bullet today. Let's go and do it, Rog. Once we've got some daylight left. Yeah. No one predicted that. Um, and if, to be honest, if I was sitting at home forecasting my computers, I'd have probably brushed it off. But it's a bit different when you're here on the sharp end and we've both flown for hours and hours to get here mm. and to be so close. BBC Radio Leicester. Weather. A fine and dry day with plenty of sunshine and light winds. Temperatures reaching 16 degrees Celsius, 61 degrees Fahrenheit. All is quiet on the weather front, and Stu is putting his time and energy into his home life. You do have to appreciate you've been very fortunate all the times that you have gone. I mean, there's not been a year gone by that you haven't been well, more than once. Well, yeah, but that's because, you know, it's tornadoes in May and June and then it's tropical storms in But you in are September. extremely fortunate. I don't mm. think you quite realise that either. Well, there's been many, many trips across the Atlantic, I know that much. Well, most women wouldn't stand for it, would they? Now we all wanted a million deer, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no, it's got a mind of its own. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> I can't steer this. But before Stuart makes plans for any future chases, he's got a big date in his domestic diary. We'd like to have had a summer wedding, but that kind of interferes with, I have to be honest, the weather season. Um... <laughs> I can't believe you're going to say that, because it does not at all. <laughs> well, it is. Well, we didn't want to get married in May or June. No, well, we couldn't, because I couldn't get the time off. There's going to yeah. be a domestic going on the, ca on the thing now. You can't <laughs> say that, Stuart. That makes it look really insignificant. It's, well, I'm just saying that March the, 20, uh, Mar the end of March was the date that, uh, that would seem to fit with everything. It's not hurricane season and it's not tornado season. So we were um, perfect date. <laughs> <laughs> so isn't true, though, is it? There was nothing available in the summer. That's true. And the only other option was March, so don't you dare say it's to do with the no, tornado but... and the hurricane seasons. It's not. No, but it fits in nicely, doesn't it? It's an ideal time of year to get married. You'll be all right, dear. <laughs> you can't say that, cos it just makes it look so insignificant. Well, it's not insignificant. Because everybody's just going to go, oh, can you believe that he's, he's actually managed to swing that his, even his wedding's not in that season? Oh, God. Well, it, it, it worked out well. If that's what <laughs> you want to think, then that's fine. <laughs> With the big day fast approaching, Stuart uses his forecasting skills in a way that his fiancée would approve of. It's actually been really interesting. Alison, uh, for once, has started to take a real interest in the weather. But right now, it's not actually looking that good. My prediction next week for the wedding day is bright in the morning, rain in the afternoon. What I really hope for is wake up in the morning, blue skies, around lunchtime, we get to see a few cumulus clouds forming as convection starts to occur. Those clouds get bigger into the afternoon and around about tea time we get some really good hailstorms falling. Because that's that's you know typical April shower hailstorm. I'd love that if that happened, but <laughs> I don't think Alison would be too happy. Where are you 
you going? <laughs> Hour too early with the weather. But no hail either, but uh, you can't have everything. Do you think that um, this is going to go on for the rest of your married life? Hmm, good question. Um, well, I know he'll always be passionate about the weather. I'm not so sure that he'll always be off storm chasing and things. I think uh, if our circumstances change within that time, then he might have to rethink going off. What do you mean? Well, if we were to have children. I don't think he's quite going to be able to have the, the same freedom, should I say. <laughs> we're just about to go into the eye of the... <laughs> He might have to be more of an armchair chaser than a, a practical chaser. Mr. Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> 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 After a brief honeymoon in the Lake District, Stuart has once again hooked up with his old buddy, Roger Hill. This time they are chasing twisters in Tornado Alley. Roger has seen over 400 tornadoes and turned his obsession into a business, taking punters as close to twisters as possible. Large tornado right next to the highway here. You come across the road right in front of us. You close, people. Hello, I don't have time. There's a big tornado on the ground right in front of me. I'll call me back later. In recent years, Rogers employed Stuart as a driver and a fellow guide on the tour. Today's first stop is the site of one of the most devastating tornadoes in history. We're now approaching the town of Greensburg, which has its own place in tornado history. Uh, Greensburg was destroyed by an F5 tornado. That's the most powerfulest tornado there is, with wind speeds in excess of 250 miles an hour. I drove through here, um, Wolf just a few weeks after it had happened and everything was just destroyed. What a devastating mess. My goodness. Quite a sobering scene. It's someone's house, that. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Have you ever seen such a sight, Stu? No, I haven't. Not even during the hurricane chasing. No. This looks like a war scene. It really does. It does. It's always a balance of conscience uh, chasing tornadoes. Uh, for one thing, the tornadoes will form whether or not I'm there. It, it really pains me to, uh, to see the damage that these things leave behind. It's, um, it's a wrestle of conscience. I'm very, you know, you won't see me filming someone's house that's just been destroyed going, oh, wow, look at that. This tornado must have been at least 180 miles an hour wind speed. What a great forecast. Oh, no. The, the, the conscience there is all oh, those poor people. Back on the road, the convoy has just spotted a thunderstorm that may develop into a tornado. There's a cell that's gone up near Scott City, um, which is looking particularly potent at the moment, and this storm has a tornado written all over it. Now that is one beast of a storm. Absolute beast. We're dropping south, and I imagine this warning just coming on the radio now could be for a tornado warning on this storm. With the chance to grab some footage of a tornado forming, the convoy pulls over. We've got a tornado forming right in front of us just here. Could be right in front of us. You want to slow down? These people are taking a big risk. Look at these clouds here. Spinning like crazy! A tornado starts to form right above their heads. Roger and Stuart can't take the risk of being that close. Go. Oh, go. Go on, we're going, we're going. Sorry, mate, this is danger close. We've got to get out or we'll lose windows. Ooh, that was a baseball, you heard that one. Get out of the hail. OK, copy that, copy, copy. This is really high risk now. I think 
think we're driving through a town at the moment. I can't actually hear, see anything. It really is whiteout conditions. Wow! With visibility decreasing, Stuart and the convoy are unsure which way the storm is moving. The big worry is that they'll become engulfed by the tornado. Uh, health and safety now, but we got my back on a rucksack, so my window blows in, we're in deep doodle. It's going to be my window that goes, so I need to... to... fight another day. Oh, my God. Jeez, I've got to have a look at the radar. I've got to see what's just happening. We got clipped by the mesocyclone, um, which is like the, the, the wind's rushing around the tornadic circulation, but it, uh, it hit us just like that, those winds. I, honest to God, thought we'd driven into a tornado because the winds were just, like, circulating across the road. <laughs> <laughs> Boy! Just because to show, even when, with all my experience and everything, even around these storms, you know, just how we how they can catch, catch you unawares. <sighs> Jeez. Right, I need to sort out the windscreen. Let's just go down. Let's just go and talk to everybody now. I thought we were dead. <laughs> I thought that was tornadic circulation. I, thought it was I turned the car into it, <laughs> 90 degrees, and both my windscreen wipers turned inside out. <laughs> I had no windscreen wipers driving up that interstate. Oh, just no. red lights. When that, 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 that reflex surge, oh, yeah. I thought we were dead. 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 I thought we were toast then, Rog. Oh, we were too close. That was toast. We <laughs> close. I actually thought it was one of those, it's one of those oh my god moments. Stuart's been in Leicestershire for the summer, but as September approaches, both he and Alison know that for the next two months, it's hurricane season. I would never stop him doing something because I know it's, you know, a real passion of his. I wouldn't stop him from doing it. But obviously, you know, you do get to a point where at the end of the day, he's a husband now and has to take that responsibility as much as, you know, other things. For the past two days, Stu's been following a tropical storm in the Atlantic. It has the potential to turn into the monster hurricane he's been waiting for. In the last few hours, well, really, it's, you know, I've been looking at it all day now, the hurricane has definitely, definitely started to intensify, and the models have got agreement on where it'll make landfall, so we've got to go after that one. Definitely. If we can get to Houston, that would be great, um, and take things from there. It's been three years since I've chased a hurricane in America. Three years. And if I don't get this one, it could be another three years, it could be ten. Yeah, the opportunity's there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab it with both hands. Gustav roars. The hurricane that's sweeping the Caribbean is gathering force as it approaches New Orleans. There is serious risk of significant flooding. Message to the people of the Gulf Coast is this storm is dangerous. The people of New Orleans are bracing themselves for the worst. It's all booked. Meeting Roger in Houston tomorrow afternoon. I don't actually know right now where we're going to end up tomorrow night, but if I give you a ring, just let you know, or I'll send you a text or something like that. You must be a little worried about him. Of course I'm bothered about him because he's my husband at the end of the day, isn't he? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, shut up. Of course I'm bothered about him, but, you know, just because I don't hear from him every day doesn't mean that he's not, he's not OK, so... We, this is just our thing. I mean, believe me, I wait all year for this. This one sort of trip of, of the year, you know, to get a good hurricane or see a good tornado and, and stuff. And if I'm not actually storm chasing, I'm thinking about storm chasing and and stuff. Perhaps I ought to spend more time and doing other things, but this is my fun time, if you understand. I'm not sure there's many would put up with put up with it really, going away and, you know, 
potentially putting yourself in harm's way and, and stuff. Some, in fact, I'm convinced that a lot of people think it's just darn right irresponsible, but... I probably don't know the full truth of, of how bad things get. And maybe he shields that from me. I don't know. Might be wrong. So, Stu, hypothetically, if Alison, if Alison said, I don't want you to go to this one, mm. what would you do? Oh, well, yeah, good question. A few years ago, I think I'd have probably said, I'm going to go after the storm and attempt to pick the pieces up when I got home. But it's different now. Alison's my wife and we have, we've got a, a good understanding. If Alison really didn't want me to go, I wouldn't go. Mm. Oh. Mm. Do you believe him? Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Hurricane Gustav, a Cat 3 killer, heading this way. You need to be scared. You need to be concerned. And you need to get your butts moving out of New Orleans. Right now. This is the storm of the century. I just saw the news. <laughs> hey, we're officially good with it. <laughs> Cat 4. Cat 4 now, and it's forecast to peak at 150 knots tomorrow. Oh. And it have, has it making landfall about 6 p.m. Monday, right near Kuma. I can't believe it's intensified so much. Tell me. Oh! Look at the Oh. oh, what's this island here? They're getting creamed right oh, now. That's the Isle of Youth. That is, they're in the Western Eye Wall. <laughs> they're getting absolutely. Oh, if they were in the Eastern Eye Wall, there'd be any island left. Well, no, yeah, but this. Oh, the... Cuba is going to take a massive beating from this thing. Ah. Oh. 125 knot landfall. That's a high end Cat 4. We have got to get our stuff and get, we're good. get provisions and gas yeah. immediately before we do anything. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we knew it, though. You just knew it. Everybody getting out of Louisiana. I've no doubt. I mean, clearly people are taking Gustav seriously. I mean, that's just stunning, isn't it? So, well, I would say stunning. It's a surreal shot. And, you know, you've got one side of the interstate empty. As the whole of Louisiana flees to safety, Stu and Rog are heading to the town of Huma, where they plan to intercept Gustav. That's probably the emergency manager pulling out. Is that fire? Oh, yeah. After fire the brigade, they're pulling out. Yeah. We're on our own, Rog. What does that tell you? Yeah, it's a park. It's park. It's dumping here, can't it? Right. <laughs> Stop. You can see the eye wall of the hurricane already showing up on the radar, and it's tracking right on the north side of the forecast path. And if you see this little camera here, green camera, that's us. <laughs> and you can see the eye is heading right toward us. Based on what we're seeing here, as long as this hurricane continues on the path that it is, we will get the eye. The eye will pass directly over the top of us. We'll get everything the storm has to offer if we can find us a place to stay in this town. Stu, we have got to find us a place in this town. <laughs> Somehow, some way, we have got to get a place to stay here. <laughs> oh my goodness. One of the safest places to observe a hurricane is a multi-story car park. So the boys head into town. There it is, right there. And is it, is it blocked? Oh, the police are blocked. They got it blocked. Shit, shit. Do I go and talk to them? Yeah, you can, you can talk to them. Tell them what we're doing. Let me go for a cigarette first. I need to get my courage up for that. Oh, let's just park over. All right, good luck. <laughs> With a car park under armed guard, Stu needs to get creative with his credentials. I'm Stuart Robinson from Toro, back at Oxford University. We study hurricanes and typhoons all the way around the world. And uh, we, just, we just, you know, we're, we're no trouble. We just really just want somewhere to deploy some weather monitoring equipment. And just... Uh, I have to get because all our police are coming in. Yeah. Um, we just, to be honest, it's just um, we just want somewhere just out of this, just out of the rain and the, and the wind and stuff. We have more of a handle on what the storms are doing. Like what you can tell you, the eye's going to pass right over 
right over the top of us. We've got like, I mean, this is just some of the products that we've got on. Hi, this is a... How are you doing? We can offer you great updates by the minute, as much as you want. We don't want any coffee, food, water, anything. We've got gas, everything. We just need, we just need to protect the vehicle. That's all we need to do. And the only thing we got is the top, very top floor, I think. The boys managed to black their way into the car park, thus securing the perfect place to shelter from the worst Gustav has to offer. It's mission accomplished. <laughs> yes. yes! We got our spot. Oh, the winds are gonna howl up here. The little flags are gonna get shredded with the first good winds. Lots of tin roofs. Power transformer here. Oh my god. The graveyard. The graveyard, yeah. After a few precious hours' kip, Roger and Stuart wake just before dawn to find out the latest news on Gustav. It's 4.30 in the morning, and uh, basically the hurricane has not gotten any stronger, and in fact it's probably gotten weaker. And it's also moving on more of a path to the left, which is also a sign that it's weakening instead of strengthening, moving to the right. So we're going to have to probably go farther to our west to... Uh, uh, intercept this thing. Pretty disappointing. Gustav is still a Category 2 hurricane with winds in the region of 110 miles an hour. But it's on the move. The challenge now is to find the eye. We've really got to go. We're going to catch that eye. The storm has actually come forward much quicker and it's passing to our... Uh, going to pass to our west, so we're going to just quickly just throw everything back on the truck, and we're going to have to drive out in the storm, actually drive into the eye that way. Right, we're good to go. We're going into the teeth of this thing. Oh, man! <laughs> Roger and Stu have reached Morgan City, where the radar predicts the eye will now hit. We're literally just minutes, minutes away now from the uh, most intense winds that we're going to find from this storm on the outer edge of the, uh, the eye wall. We, we believe we've positioned ourselves quite accurately that we're actually going to get into the eye wall. Yeah. And another. Slam. A small like it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I need to get some goggles. <laughs> thing is getting stronger and stronger. Uh, it's going to take a wind measurement. OK, let's do it. Watch for debris, dude! Watch for debris, man! Holy crap! That took me quite a little bit by surprise, actually. Uh, just for a while, then, we started losing roofs off buildings and signs were blowing down. As the 90 mile an hour winds subside into an eerie calm, Stuart and Roger have finally achieved their goal. Time is just five to one local time. Unbelievably, in the eye of Hurricane Gustav. Trees down, signs blown out, power poles down. It's amazing. I mean, to think, Rog, to think not half an hour ago we were struggling to stand up over there. I know it. 
absolutely amazing. So peaceful. <laughs> it really is. Mm. Struggling to get through here, actually. Eye of Hurricane Gustav. I'm just really disappointed. I wanted to give Alison a ring and let her know where I am right now. I mean, right now, at this moment in time, which is uh, in the eye of the storm. The boys made it into the eye of Hurricane Gustav, a true storm-chasing achievement. But as they say farewell, they may not be apart for long. Quite an interesting change of events, really. Um, I'm literally all packed, ready to leave for the airport. Foolishly, I've looked at the models. I'm, there's another storm that's spinning away in the Atlantic. This is a uh, Hannah. Alison is expecting me home tomorrow morning in Mount Sorrel in Leicestershire. I am just doing a feasibility study about stopping out here and possibly interfecting Hannah as she makes landfall on Friday. Oh, my goodness, Alison. I just realised Alison is going away with work. She has to work away from home Monday till Friday. So if I'm not home Sunday night, I won't see her before she goes. This is... Oh, my God, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> I am going to risk... Well, not risk, I'm definitely going to upset my wife so that I can further my passion for storm chasing. Mm. Hello. Hello, Chum. It's only me. Um, slight change of plans, dear. Right. Uh, tropical storm Hannah has exploded uh, just off the Florida coast. Right. And it's going to go into North Carolina. Right. Um, and I'd really, really like to go after it. When are you likely to be home? It means I wouldn't, I wouldn't get back and see you before, um, before you go go away for the week, and that would no, be like a, fo a fortnight without, almost a fortnight without seeing each other. I can't say it makes me very happy at all. No. I never say no. For once, I'm going away, and it would be nice to see you before I went. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I've got things wrong, and this storm means bloody more to you than I do. This is a not good situation, is it? Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously too lenient. I've obviously been walked over for too long. No, 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 I wouldn't say that, Alison, not at well, all. I'm starting to wonder myself. And are you married to me or the bloody hurricane? <laughs> Do you know what? You just go, we'll have this atmosphere, and then, well... I'm just starting to wonder now, I really am. Are we saying goodbye for two weeks now, or what are we doing? No, look, can I phone you back after tea, dear? Yeah, I think you're all right. All right, bye. Bye. I didn't go very well. I made a lot of promises to Alison when I married her. Um, and she's, she knows that storm chasing's in my blood and she knows that she'll never... She knows that I'll always do it. But there's a difference between going out and chasing only the best of the best storms and every once in a blue moon doing that and then be becoming frankly obsessive and I'm wondering now if I'm obsessive with it. Stewart's already called home to discuss extending his trip to chase another hurricane. He calls again, hoping for a different answer. Hello. Hello, chum, it's only me. Hello, you. I don't suppose you've mellowed a little bit. No, not really. At all. No, none whatsoever. I'm standing my ground on this one. OK. Uh, I really don't know what to say. I mean, I really, really, really... Alison, believe me, I really, really want to chase this storm. I really do. Well, I'm not changing my mind. Damn. OK. All right. I'll I'm, see you. I'm, I'm not. I'll see you tomorrow, then, mate. All right. OK, then. All right, then. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. I tell you what, I'm really, really annoyed now. Really annoyed. Got to go all the way bleeding home and then... ..just to prove a point, and I can't stand this. Just to prove a bloody, bloody point. We've been together for ten years and we can afford to be apart for three more flipping days. I'm just really annoyed, actually, that I allowed myself to be talked into it. I was too soft, that was the problem. I 
I'm here in America, and it's not as if I'm at home wishing to travel out. I'm already here. I've got to try just one last call. I've just got to be sure. All right, Chum, I need to ask you just again, but this time I'm asking you not to say no. I'm asking you just to be very, very annoyed with me, but just let me do it. I'm trying desperately to plead with you to, to, to let me chase this storm. I'm desperately pleading with you. Well, I'm telling you now, I'm stopping out for this storm. How does that sound? Are you pointing an emotional gun to my head here, Alison? I'm sorry, darling, I'm sorry. Alison, I'm really sorry about that. Don't... Alison, don't be stupid. I'll see you tomorrow night. Let's just say that uh, Alison has made me see her point of view quite well, and uh, I'm doing the right thing and going home to see to spend some time with my wife and not uh, not uh, play around with storms. I don't know when I'll be able to come and chase another storm again. Based on the last conversation, never. Meanwhile, Hannah will probably explode and go smacking into the North Carolina coast as a Cat 5 storm, no, my luck. I've checked my bags in, I'm booked on the flight. Um, that's it, I'm on my way home. The roast is perfect, Alison. Uh, well, I'm glad I came home, actually. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Alison, the storm wasn't that great, but that doesn't mean I didn't know that at the time, and I, I'm glad I made the right decision to come home. <laughs> Anybody thought I'd kicked you under the table then when you said that? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd ask you if I could stop on. You considered it and thought it wasn't the best idea. No, I... but circumstances were different here mm. at home, weren't they, on that mm. occasion, and there's never been another time where no. you've mm. wanted to stay on and for weeks, etc. So I'm just really glad that, you know, we chatted about it and sorted it and you came home when you did. And I'm glad I came home too. Do you want another roast potato? No, I'm actually quite full, actually. Um, I want to ensure I've left room for crumble. Mm. To watch an exclusive interview with Storm Chaser Stuart Robinson, go to channel4.com and search for A Very British Storm Junkie. Next tonight, a grieving mother whose own lifestyle became a topic of media speculation turns detective to discover who killed Scarlet.